Okay, take a look at this. We've got all of the onions chopped up and added. We've got the beets shredded and added. These gorgeous little red and white stripes. This is so pretty. It looks like something out of a Willy Wonka candy store window. Or a modern art painting. Yeah, it's beautiful. Can't wait to eat it. Okay, now what we're gonna do is chop up the garlic. You know, I once read that Captain James Cook took sauerkraut on his voyages. The pirate? No, not the pirate. He was like, he, I think he found Australia. Not the one with Peter Pan. No. Real historical one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was to prevent scurvy, wasn't it? Yeah. The um, German sailors took that on their voyages too, um, to prevent scurvy. That's why they're called kraut. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, we're gonna get you guys peeling here. All right. Take your garlic, tear it all up, and when you've got the little cloves, and garlic, you know, it's personal preference. You can use as many as you want. We usually use at least two good size little cloves per jar. So what you need to do is, now that you've got it all torn apart, Take a little knife, cut off the little end there, and then most of it, it's hard to peel with this band-aid on, most of that little peel will come right off. Then you'll be ready, ready to put it in the garlic press, or just chop it with a knife, squeeze it in there. Okay, we got everything put in there and mixed up and the garlic added to it. So now we're gonna add our salt. You wanna use two tablespoons of sea salt for every five pounds of cabbage that you use. So just sprinkle it over, all of it. We're gonna be using a little bit more because we have a lot more cabbage than this. Mix it up a little bit, get it kind of mixed together. That guy's trying to run away. Mix it all up. And then the fun part, the pounding. Okay, you wanna show me how it's done? You gonna start with it? Hold the bowl so you don't dump it all out. Brett, I'll let you get in there. Perfect, perfect, thank you. Okay, take your pounder out. Okay, you wanna pound your sauerkraut down until it is well, almost half of the size of what it was when you put it in there, two thirds at the very least. What you're going for, I don't know if you can see the juices as they, because they all kind of trail down to the bottom of the bowl. You want the salt and a pounding action to break down the cell walls of the cabbage and the onions and things and make this natural juice. So instead of making a brine, like we do in our cultured vegetables, we're pounding this down with the salt to make its own brine. It's making its own juice. That salt's gonna mingle in there and make the brine for it. So Bradley, if you would please fill up the culture lid to the maximum mark with water right. and fill this stainless steel little cup about half full of water, please. Okay. And Brett, we're gonna fill up our jar now. Okay. Here, you scoop it in there for me and I'll make sure it goes down there. This is gonna be beautiful when it's finished. Yeah. Put that little cap back on it, great. Okay. Maybe sure and get some of that good juice down at the bottom. Okay. We're gonna have several jars to fill and we've got more than this bowl full. So we won't make you watch the entire process, but we'll fill this one up and show you how to finish it off. Okay. Look at that pretty beet in there. Yeah. Little stripey. Keep digging, there you go. Riley, we're gonna need our pounder back. All right. Okay. All right. Keep, keep 
putting it in. And what you want to do is sort of press this, kind of tamp it down so that it's solid in there. Okay, keep going. Perfect. Get that good juicy stuff in there. You'll be able to see the juice as it kind of forms its way up the side. Very juicy. Oh, yeah. You know that you've got good, fresh cabbages when it makes the juice. You can't get any juice out of it, then chances are they weren't very fresh. They were dried out. But these came straight out of the field of the CSA, so we know they're good. Okay, maybe one more scoop. Let's we'll see how we do. All right. Let's see what that looks like. You, mm, tiny bit more, about a half a scoop more. You can see the juice lines just sort of coming up the side of the jar. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oop, sorry, I took, I took that away. It's okay, our hands are clean. There we go. Give that a little push down. You want to make the cultures come to about the, this, I call this the shoulder of the half gallon mason jar here. You want to make it come uh, past the shoulder to the little line where it starts. And it'll, it'll, its juice line is already now to the shoulder and it'll kind of come up as it, as it ferments. So take the little stainless steel cup, half full of water. The water is in there to weight it down. I'm gonna set it on top. Yep, see how the juice line comes up when I push it down? We're gonna set that there because as they ferment and culture, air bubbles will just form and they'll bubble up the sides and they'll bubble up out here. That way the germs can't get in but also the bubbles can get out so that it doesn't explode. This little cup is gonna make sure that those little pieces of cabbage don't come up and get lodged into the bottom of this thing and clog the whole process up. So now we put the lid on, we're gonna set it aside. We put ours in a cooler and we put little ice packs around it so that we can keep it around 70-ish degrees. It doesn't have to be exact. It's just you don't want it getting too hot and you wouldn't want it to be freezing cold. So we're in Florida. We keep a little ice packs in there to keep it cool enough. So that's what it looks like. Okay, there you have it. That's how to make homemade sauerkraut. If you've never tried sauerkraut, we encourage you to give it a try. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. It tastes nothing like that bagged, jarred, icky stuff that you get in the store. This is truly lacto-fermented, cultured sauerkraut, just like it would have been originally years ago. It's yummy, yummy, yummy. I can't, I just can't imagine. I used to think sauerkraut would just be the grossest thing to eat, but it is really, truly delicious. Now, once you get it put into these jars, if you're using a culture lock lid like this, it's gonna stay in here for four days. After four days, you take these lids off, you put a solid, regular mason jar lid on it and put it in the refrigerator. Once it's in the refrigerator, it will last indefinitely. It will stay good forever in there, but chances are it's not gonna have a chance to because it's gonna be eaten up before you can even blink an eye. It really is that good. You could put it on salad, you could put it on a baked potato, you could have it as a side dish, you could add it in things. It's delicious any old way you wanna do it. Another note, let's see, the beets. The beets that we used, um, they had the little pink and white stripes in them. That's an heirloom variety from Italy, from Chioga, Italy, and they're called Chioga beets. 
So you don't have to have those. You can have regular red beets, or if you don't have any beets at all, that's great. Sauerkraut, sauerkraut without beets. You can make sauerkraut with nothing but the cabbage and the sea salt, period. You don't have to have any other things. We just like it tasty and yummy and good. So when we started out, let's recap. We had four heads of cabbage, yeah, four heads, all different sizes. And we had two onions. There was a pretty large one and a medium sized one. We had three small chioga beets and we had one bulb of garlic. All of that, once we got it shredded up and chopped it up and mushed up was so much that it wouldn't fit in our big stainless steel bowl. We had to put it in a big cooler to mix it all up. But once you pound it down, thanks to my pounders, then it comes down to about half the size it was originally. Once it does, it makes the good juicy broth, the, the brine that goes in there, and we put it into the jars. So all of that stuff that we had up here condensed down into these three half gallon mason jars. So that'll give you an idea. Um, if you're making it yourself, you've never made it before, maybe start with half that amount of stuff. And it's, it's scientific, but it's not rocket science. You don't have to be exact. The only thing you need to do is make sure that you have two tablespoons of sea salt for each one of the jars that you're using. So, is there anything else? I don't think so. Think of no. anything else? Well, I would like to thank you guys for helping me. I appreciate it. Couldn't have chopped it all up without you. And we'd like to thank y'all for joining us about how to make homemade sauerkraut right here on reallifenaturalhealth.com.